The episode begins with Ryota waking up from his sleep and finding Celeste lying on the table, looking very tired. When Ryota asked her about her condition, Emily told him that she had a headache. Celeste then informed them that the magical storm had caused it. Ryota was taken aback by this revelation as it was the first time he had heard of such a thing. Celeste then began to explain that whenever there was a magical storm, she always felt a heaviness and pain in her heart. However, she reassured them and told them that she would be fine, as she would feel better after the storm had passed. At this point, Ryota spoke up and told them that since that was the case, they shouldn't go to the Damas today. Instead, they could go look for a big house. He believed that a large house might protect Celeste from the magical storm, wondering if there were any houses that could mitigate the effects of the magical storm. The scene now shifts to Ryota, Emily, and Celeste searching for some big houses. They enter one such large house, and the property owner welcomes them. As they enter the house, Celeste is surprised to find that her headache suddenly disappears. She then informs them that she knows of houses that have this effect, where they can absorb negative energy from the body and convert it into positive energy. The property owner explains that this house was built using the latest techniques to ward off magical storms. The scene transitions to the kitchen, and Emily is delighted to see that the kitchen is very spacious. When they inquire about the monthly rent for this house, the man tells them that it will be much higher than the market price because the house was built and designed to protect against magical storms. The monthly rent for this house is 400,000 Balo, which shocks everyone due to its high cost. However, Ryota assures them that it's not a problem and that he wants to bring a smile to Emily and Celeste's faces. The next morning, Celeste stands by the window, and Ryota approaches her to check on her. She informs him that she is now in good health and has cleaned the entire house. When Ryota sees the clean house, he is amazed by Emily's speed in cleaning, but she corrects him, revealing that it was actually Celeste who did the cleaning. Emily praises Celeste's incredible abilities, but then the rabbit girl approaches them, asking for some carrots. Then she informs them of the plan for the day, explaining that they will be searching for rare monsters on the seventh level of Tililo. She reassures rabbit girl that they will get some carrots there. However, when they are about to start their mission, Emily enters and tells them that breakfast is ready. The scene now shifts to the evening with them outside where snow is falling all around. They call this place Demas of Snow. According to its construction, some of the Demas have floors that witness snowfall. They continue their journey until they finally find that strange person. He talks to the two kids, saying they did their best, and he gets deeply moved by their words as they always feel the same pain he does but he wants to teach them how to become strong and rely on themselves to defend their country, their people, and their lands. He hugs them and tells them they are a pride to their nation. Then, the scene transitions to Ryota talking to himself, not impressed by the man's words, thinking he's lying and putting on an act. Just then, Emily informs him that a monster is coming. Ryota takes out his gun and aims it, but it has no effect. Ryota decides to slap the monster with his hand to make it lose balance. After that, he aims his gun at it again, but still, nothing happens. Ryota is amazed by this and wonders about it. Then the monster starts attacking Ryota with great force. He cannot defeat the fire slime on his own because fire slimes become invincible when they are on the brink of death. So they don't take damage from the last person who attacks them. The only solution is for another person to attack it, and then Celeste uses her extraordinary firepower to easily eliminate it, leaving everyone in awe. Then Emily tells Ryota that he can now leave that floor to them. At this moment, another fire slime appears, but Emily attacks it with her mighty hammer, then enlists Ryota's help to finish it off. The union of their strength proves to be a significant advantage, making it easy for them to defeat the monsters.
Emily then informs them that the beautiful onion they obtained is excellent for cooking, so they will use it in the main meal when they return home. However, just as they are about to leave, the fire slime reappears and attacks Ryota with force, causing him to fall to the ground. This blue fire slime seems very angry and appears to be a rare creature. Ryota regains his composure and starts thinking of a plan to defeat this monster. Celeste warns him that it is a highly evolved creature, and they should be very cautious when fighting it. At this moment, the rabbit girl speaks up. She knows its weaknesses well and informs them that she has fought one before. The rabbit girl quickly launches an attack on the monster, and in a matter of moments, Ryota uses his powerful gun with precision, finally managing to defeat the monster with ease. The monster drops a jewel, and it has the power to reflect some attacks. Ryota then tests out the jewel on level two of Talilu, and due to this, the sleepy slime dies on its own. Ryota thinks that it is convenient, but it's faster to kill the monsters himself. The scene then cuts to Riot is selling the jewel to Urza, and Urza mentions the thanks to the Sir Shop's rank, and Trust will go up again, and she mentions that she will give Ryuta three million pillows for this item. Ryota thinks that it's a bit much, and Urza mentions that the prices are up right now, due to the harvest, festival, Ryuta, and his party, then leaves the Swallow's gratitude, and a girl then enters the store, and she asks multiple adventurers to let her join their party, but they all refuse her afterwards. Ryota goes to level 5 of Nionium, and he fights a red skeleton there. He thinks that the red skeleton is really fast, but he manages to defeat it, and he finds out that the seeds on this level can increase his magic points. Ryota then wonders how he can learn magic, and the scene cuts to Ryota and Celeste out of the town, and Ryota states that it cost him three million pillows to buy this item. Celeste then mentions that most people learn magic by leveling up, but since Ryota can't level up, he will have to eat this magic fruit. To learn a random spell, Ryuta then turns the fruit into a stray, hoping that it would drop something even better, and the fruit turns into some kind of metal monster. The monster then takes the shape of Ryuta, and Ryuta fights. It Ryuta then thinks that this must be a type of monster that takes 80 specks of whatever it copies, and he defeats it by throwing it into the air and shooting it with a bullet. The monster then drops the same fruit, but it now has two magic circles, and Ryuta then eats it. The scene then cuts to Emily. Finding out that Ryuta has learned two magic spells and Ryuta shows her that one of them is Wind Cutter and Emily wonders, what's the other spell is like Ryota states that it's kind of weird and he mentions that he will test it out on those monsters. Ryuta then uses the spell reservation on the slime and Emily finishes. The slimes off Ryuta then uses the spell reservation on the slime and Emily finishes the slime off. This gives Emily a lot of drop items, and Ryota mentions that this spell can make his drop rates apply to whoever actually defeats the monster after he has cast the spell on that monster. He mentions that it's not that useful as he needs to be present for it to work, and Emily states that this is not true, as this did help her increase her level. Celeste then mentions that when Ryuta uses the spell someone other than him can finish off the monster and it helps them level up. Ryota thinks that he is glad that he got a spell which can help his friends, and afterwards Ryuta is in the town, and he notices that Urza is carrying a lot of things. He offers to help her, and he takes her to the Swallow's gratitude. Ryuta then notices a girl inside the shop, and the old adventurer from before tells the girl that he will let her join. His party Urza then explains that this girl has been asking for adventurer companions lately, but everyone turns her down as her max level is only two Ryota then goes in, and he mentions that this girl will be joining his party instead. Urza then states that the girl is really lucky as she gets to join the famous party Ryota family, and she mentions that it's the hottest party in town right now. The other adventurers then think that this girl is really lucky, and the girl asks them, if this party is really a big deal, they mention that it is, and the old adventurer leaves, and Ryu that asks the girl. If she wants to join his party, the girl mentions that she does, and Ryu asks her name. The girl mentions that it's Alice and Ryuta, then takes her to Nihonium to check her level. He notices that she only has a level of one, and her stats are really bad. Ryuta then thinks that this is hopeless, and he thinks that she should be able to fight in this dungeon. He states that they should start with some leveling up and they head into level. 
One of my Honium Alice mentions that the air in here really takes her back, and she states that she was apparently born inside a dungeon. She mentions that she just popped out when her pregnant mom was working in the dungeon, and Ryuta is surprised to hear this Ryota, then states that they should kill some monsters, and Alice mentions that she can sense some monsters. This way Ryota heads that way, and he finds a horde of skeletons, and he can't believe that Alice can sense where the monsters are, and Ryota then binds all the skeletons and he tells Alice to kill them. Using a rock, Alice then kills them all using the rock, and they head outside to check if she is leveled up. Ryota notices that she did level up, but it didn't make much difference in her stats. Alice then wonders if they can head inside again, and she mentions that earlier Bonesy told her to hurry back. They then head inside, and Alice tells Ryuta to capture a skeleton, which is apparently Bonesy. Ryota catches it, and Alice mentions that it's telling her to defeat it. After Alice defeats the skeleton, it turns into a little skeleton, and Alice mentions that it's nice to have Bonesy with them. She mentions that Bonesy is going to fight with them from now on, and they then head to Talulu, and Bonesy defeats. A slime Ryota wonders if the damage it took is going to heal, and Alice mentions that it heals automatically when he turns into a smaller form. Alice then states that Bonesy is calling her Big Sis, since they were both born in the dungeon, and she mentions that Jiggly is calling her now a slime, which Alice named Jiggly, then comes there and Alice uses Bonesy to defeat it. Jiggly then also turns into a smaller form, and Ryota thinks that Alice's naming sense is really weird, Alice. Then thanks Ryota, and she mentions that she could only meet and befriend Bonzi and Jiggly because of him Ryuta. Then heads back to his house with Alice, and he notices he'd eating some carrot, hamburg, steaks that Emily made, and Eve thinks that they are really good. Celeste then thinks that Bonzi and Jiggly are cute, and she states that she wants to snuggle them a little bit. But they both get scared of her. Emily wonders if Celeste likes cute things, and Celeste states that she does afterwards. Ryuta introduces Alice to everyone, and he wonders if anyone has any objections to rejoining his party. Eve wonders if Alice likes carrots, and Alice states that she doesn't, and Eve mentions that she doesn't have any problems with her joining this party, as they won't be fighting over carrots. The rest of them also agree to this, and Ryuta mentions that this is how he gained another new ally. Thanks for watching part 10.